Hi, my name is Vena. I'm originally from Rio, but I live in Nandi. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm John from Kornabuan, Tapua. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks. Bula, I'm Teopola. Bula, I'm Atlisi. We love listening to Today FM because it rocks in bar. Bula, my name is Tisa. I love listening to Today FM. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni and this is FPC News. Tonight, three questioned of a discovery of bullet in a yacht in Lotoka. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority pleased with 2016 performance. An Ethiopian Prime Minister's advisor due to meet Fijian Prime Minister. A prominent Lotoka businessman and two other suspects have been taken into police custody following the discovery of bullets on board a yacht at Wunda Marina last week. Police Chief of Intelligence and Investigations, ACP, Mbiu Matavo, said they were arrested yesterday following a raid on Friday. The raids included a pharmacy belonging to the businessman. Matavo says while it had nothing to do with the discovery of the ammunitions, police had a warrant to carry out the search to gather more information. The ammunitions were allegedly found in a speedboat berthed at the marina on New Year's Day. ACP Matavo says the speedboat is registered under the name of the businessman. There was a follow-up search conducted uh, yesterday to his uh, premises uh, and also to a number of his, um, to his residents and a number of uh, business premises. After the interview, uh, we will then decide the next uh, course of action to take. The country's tax agency had a fruitful 2016 despite some setbacks caused by Tropical Cyclone Winston. Speaking exclusively to FPC News, Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says tax collection has been much higher when compared to 2015. Rachel Nath reports. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority will release its official revenue this week and Chief Executive Vishwana Das says the figures are looking healthy. Compared to last year, there's definitely uh, growth in the tax revenue and uh, had it not been for the challenges the, the country had been through, uh, I think you know we should uh, would have been really above the budget forecast we had for tax revenue. Das says the authority made progress in terms of tax compliance last year. Our revenue is growing uh, as opposed to uh, last year. You know that you know that actually indicates you know the greater potential in the economy. FERCA has also been active with border security in 2016. We have worked on uh, the uh, the non-intrusive uh, inspection uh, equipment for the border and uh, you know that has progressed well last year so in the coming months you know hopefully uh, beginning of the second quarter uh, we should be seeing some installation of uh, container cargo x-ray equipment at the wharfs. That says they successfully intercepted some illicit drugs and prohibited items from entering our borders. He says they will continue to enhance the country's border security. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The opening of Fiji's mission in Ethiopia will help strengthen relationships with the member states of the African Union. In an exclusive interview with FBC News, Ethiopian Prime Minister's Special Advisor, Dr. Tedros Adhanom, said Fiji made a wise decision to establish a mission at Addis Ababa as it is a political capital of Africa. Sevara Tambor with the story. Fiji has now access to all the member states of the African Union, and Dr. Tedros Adhanom says they are happy to strengthen ties in many areas. Starting from trade and uh, investment, which is central for the strategic uh, partnership. That's why I said Fiji uh, really have done the right thing, uh, because through its mission in Addis, can focus on trade and investment and strengthen its trade and investment ties with uh, Africa. And it's that strategic partnership, uh, that trade and investment, which is a strategic partnership that can you know, prepare us for the long-term uh, partnership. 
Dr. Tedros, who is visiting Fiji, has been endorsed by the African Union to become the next Director General of the World Health Organization. He is seeking Fiji's support on this. So uh, if I become the director, the next Director General, uh, I, will, I look forward to working with the Fijian government uh, very, very uh, closely. And the other thing is, in addition to educating myself about your health system, uh, the other purpose is uh, also to meet um, uh, senior officials uh, to ask uh, for their support uh, to my uh, candidacy and I hope I will get uh, the support uh, from Fiji. Dr. Tedros is expected to meet the Prime Minister and other senior government officials tomorrow. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Meanwhile, Dr. Tedros Adhanom toured the CWM hospital this afternoon to see firsthand the services provided. Dr. Tedros says a primary health care unit is very important and is happy the Fijian government has made progress on this. You have already outlined it in your uh, uh, health strategic uh, plan. Uh, I think increasing access is important, uh, improving the quality of services is important, and focus on prevention and primary health care is important. With almost a week remaining for the start of a new school year, Education Minister Dr. Manda Reddy says it's still difficult for the school system to return to normalcy following the massive destruction caused by tropical cyclone Winston 11 months ago. Reddy made this comment while hosting a group of donors to a lunch yesterday who have been instrumental in assisting schools damaged by Winston in Rocky Rocky. Sharon Shivan reports. More time is needed to repair cyclone-damaged schools, and Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy fears this could affect so students. We wanted to ensure that we get the children quickly back to school. And by getting them back to school, not only we minimize the dropout of children from the school system, but we also allow the parents to start rebuilding their homes. 400 out of the 900 schools were damaged by the cyclone. Dr. Reddy says his ministry has been tasked to ensure that all schools are up and running as soon as possible. Not alone that we could do that. We needed support. Support from the private sector. Support from the international community. Support from international organizations that operate out of Fiji. The government has allocated $135 million to rebuild the cyclone-damaged schools. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. After the break on FBC News, major development plans for the tourism sector. And in tonight's successful Fijian segment, we bring you the story of an 80-year businessman. Stay with us. मेरा नाम कमल रोशनी है हम लोग में रहते हैं और मिर्ची एफएम सबसे बेस्ट स्टेशन है हमारा नाम मिर्ची है हम गोल्ड ऑन तावुआ में रहता है और मिर्ची इज हॉट इन तावुआ हाय वी बाय हेल्स वी लव मिर्ची एफएम बिकॉज़ इट्स हॉट निवेश तावुआ वहां में रहता है सुनता है मिर्ची एफएम इज वेरी हॉट मिर्ची एफएम इट्स हॉट वेलकम बैक यू विद एफबीसी न्यूज़ Major developments will be undertaken in the tourism sector this year. Tourism Minister Fayaz Koya says they're making positive progress with their targets for 2020. Rachel Nart reports. The tourism industry has become one of the major foreign exchange earners in the country, and many feared the devastation caused by tropical cyclone Winston would have adverse effects on visitor arrivals. We still managed to do well, uh, and the numbers were up. Um, we thought, you know, initially we thought it was going to hit us hard, but we've, had some, we've done some serious work together with the industry stakeholders, and we have done well so far, and um, pretty much on target with respect to the numbers that we're trying to reach by 2020. Fares Koya says the industry is booming in all facets. There's been quite a lot of investment and also interest in, in development of the tourism industry. You've got quite a few hotels that will be coming up in the in this this particular year. I think the Marriott should be doing a soft opening early next year, or earlier this year, sorry, uh, projects that have been undertaken. 
According to Fiji Bureau of Statistics, earnings for the June quarter reached over $370 million. The September quarter valued around $416 million. But this is a decrease compared to the September quarter for 2015, which earned a total of $461.8 million. Koya says the additional flights added by the national carrier has benefited the sector hugely. Tourism Fiji is hard at work doing, you know, doing a lot of marketing, etc. And looking how we can bring in more and more numbers out of our of the traditional areas of Australia and New Zealand and the States. The Fijian Tourism Development Plan that will be launched in March would play a vital role in taking the industry to new heights. Rachel Nath, FBC News. More children will be helped this year by Fiji Kids Learning for Life, a grassroots charity providing financial assistance to the neediest children to attend school. The charity group identifies children that need help and finds people to sponsor their education throughout primary and secondary level and even through university. Those already helped under the initiative were given the chance to meet their sponsors yesterday. Rachel Nart reports. It was a fun-filled day for these Fiji kids and their families. For the first time, some of them got to meet the people contributing to their education. Fiji Kids follows the progress of all of the 75 students that we have in uh, school all throughout the year, make sure that they're progressing and any of the difficulties that they're facing are solved for them through the year. Um, Fiji Kids uh, supports uh, young people who are uh, deeply disadvantaged. Outrigger Fiji Beach Resort plays a vital role, linking their guests with Fiji Kids. Outrigger's been involved now for the last five years. You know, we, uh, we are privileged to be involved, you know, uh, and we just do a small part in helping them with their um, catering and things like that. But, um, you know, with these sponsors, uh, you know, it's just amazing the results they're getting. Parents and children alike shared the same sentiments, thankful to be able to get an education because of Fiji Kids. Fiji Kids will continue to find sponsors for needy children, and anyone willing to help have been urged to go onto their website. Rachel Nath, FBC News. And the World Supermodel South Pacific Regional Final was held at Pacific Harbour last night. Australian entrant 16-year-old Emily Norris Perkins beat 10 other girls to qualify for this year's World Supermodel Pageant Finals. Norris Perkins, who also won the swimwear category, will represent the South Pacific in Macau in May. Fiji's representative Zaira Beg was the winner of evening wear. Beg has won a wildcard entry ticket to the Macau finals as a Fiji representative but has to pay her own way. Tiare Simone is also from Australia but representing the Cook Islands was the first runner-up and Miss Photogenic. There were scenes of panic and chaos in Florida yesterday after a gunman opened fire in the baggage claim area at Fort Lauderdale's airport. Five people died and another eight were wounded before the police arrested the shooter, an Iraq war veteran with a history of mental health issues. From an ordinary customs officer to becoming a volunteer for more than a decade now, a successful businessman. In tonight's successful Fijian segment, Rohit Deo brings us the story of 80-year-old Yunus Hanif. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. You know, Sanif has many tales behind his success. The struggles began at an early age as his father was a doctor by profession and Hanif had to change schools due to his father's transfers to different hospitals. He completed his education in 1957 and got his first job as a customs officer. Well, I stayed there for 33 years. That is the maximum one can serve before one is entered into a pension state. And I retired uh, in 1987 uh, as a principal collector of customs. Hanif was appointed as the Assistant Secretary of Fiji Football Referees Association and in 1975 he got elected as the General Secretary of Fiji FA where he served for more than 10 years. There was a reason I entered football at that time. Uh, so most of the things that were not uh, reaching to the standards that we wanted or that I wanted and I uh, contested to uh, become the secretary of the Fiji Football Association. During his tenure at the football house, the national team got a chance to battle against big names. Ten years I was uh, unopposed as secretary. In the general meetings I was not uh, contested. 
but uh, during the 10 years uh, that I was there, I thought I had done enough for football and uh, I, I uh, gave my position to J.D. Maharaj. He was, uh... In 1986, he decided not to recontest the election and was appointed a life member of Fiji FA. He then ventured into his own business. Well, I always had a um, uh, mind to enter real estate uh, development, and uh, I had uh, two uh, invested uh, in my own company as Unida Holding Limited, and uh, was chief executive of, uh, of that. Hanif owns properties in Nosori, Singatoka and Suva, and some of his tenants include Legal Aid, Water Authority of Fiji, The Hot Bread Kitchen, LDS Church in Nosori, FNPF and LTA to name a few. He spends most of his time in New Zealand and his business is looked after by his son Razal Hanif. He says he hardly has any regrets, but for a man who has football at heart, he would like to see Fiji progress on the world stage. I only regret his football. I only hope that there comes a man with some vision some uh, thought about improving the game and how they can do it, to uh, examine all the competitions that Fiji football is now entering. So many achievements in one lifetime is something everyone hopes for, but Yunus Hanif has proven that if you have the will and set your goals right, fulfilling your dreams are just a few steps away. Rohit Deo, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in sports, Wallabies coach wants more matches for Pacific Island teams. And Fiji Mbambas lose in Sud America 7's final. Details after the break. Nimbula Vinaka, Naya Langunga, and the Moala Rara Ranalika, or Tikungana Town of Singapore, and the Talisaka and Avarong and Ambula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. We have the Rasu Bunikurnabili, Burani Batskara and Barabinarna, the Talitakina Varong and Ambula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. Bula Bula FM, numbered the way in a serve. Well, the Fiji Mambas team lost to Argentina 22-21 in the final of the Sud America Sevens in Uruguay earlier today. Fiji were the favourites for the title, but Argentina had other plans and managed a narrow win. Earlier in the semi-finals, Fiji thrashed USA 43-0, while Argentina accounted for Chile 29-0. In the quarterfinals, Fiji beat Brazil 31-0, USA edged Colombia 14-12, Argentina beat Canada 26-5, while Chile beat Uruguay 19-12. The Chile leg of the tournament will be played next weekend. Australian rugby coach Michael Chika says Tier 1 nations should play test matches against the Pacific Island teams. He says this way they'll be able to give back to the islands for what they have contributed on the world stage. Rohit Deo with the story. Playing against them because I think um, it's important that, uh, that we give back into the Pacific countries and I think the end goal will be to be playing a test match here, you know, in, in Fiji. I think that's something that we should try and look to do because it would be giving back to the people of Fiji in saying we need to give back in, into the Pacific Islands, especially to Fiji because they've been an important part of Australian rugby. The Latoka football side has defeated Bar 6-1 in the Vodafone Under-17 Western Zone to win the division on a 6-3 aggregate. The Junior Blues came out firing, which they needed to do, coming into the match with a 2-0 deficit. Lotoka are now the Western champions, as Talebu Neta Siri won the Southern Zone, and Lambasa took out the Northern Zone. Brisbane Roar's 13-match unbeaten run was smashed by the Newcastle Jets in the Hyundai A-League competition last night. The Jets came from a goal down to win 3-2. Now still in the A-League, Melbourne City ended its six-match winless run in style with a 1-0 victory over Western Sydney Wanderers. The goal is being labelled by many as one of the best of the season. It was a generally fine day throughout the country today. 
Now, temperatures soared up to 33 degrees in Nandi, Lotoka, Ba and Savu Savu. Suva was on 32 and Lambasa recorded 30 degrees. Now, for tomorrow, you can expect cloudy periods with some showers about the eastern parts and interior of the other larger islands. It should be fine elsewhere. Outlook for Tuesday, unfortunately, rain is in forecast. Recapping the main stories, three questioned over discovery of bullet in a yacht in Lotoka. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority pleased with 2016 performance and Ethiopian Prime Minister's advisor due to meet Fijian Prime Minister. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Now to the poll question. Should the residential and ground rent freeze be lifted? To answer, you can visit our FBC website. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensisfpc.com.fk or share it with us via our Facebook page FTC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FTC News or simply hashtag FTC News. Until next time, I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. This is FTC News. Good night. Hello, we from Latoka. We love listening to Gold FM on the classic hits. Hola, my name is Kanto. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Gold FM on the classic hits. Hola, Fiji. My name is Florence Ratu. I'm from Corner Number One in Tabua, and I love listening to Gold FM on the classic hits every day and all day. Hi, my name is Anna, and I'm from the soccer crazy town of Ba. I love listening to Gold FM on the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.